All right, people, welcome to today's episode of Stoop Stories, which we are going to entitle The Next Step. Thanks to Jonathan Price, our franchise partner in Reno, Nevada. He listened to the last episode and reached out and said, hey, man, we need to talk about the next stoop. If we're going to get off the stoop and use it as a step, you know, what is the next step? So that's what we're here to discuss today, Mr. Heron. Yes, sir. Mr. Mr. Moreau, you want to read this uh, quote that you have from Ray Dalio, who's a billionaire hedge fund uh, CEO. Um, he, he wrote a book called Principles, which is a really good read. It's a big-ass book, so don't be intimidated, but lots of really good knowledge there. Yeah, yeah, and he's actually worth $16.9 billion is his net worth, mm-hmm. so he might know a thing or two, or does he? Yeah, I think uh, $16.9 billion would lead you to believe that he clearly does know a thing or two. Yeah, he's earned my trust for sure. So, yeah, we're going to read a passage from his book, Principles. Uh, So here we go. Before I begin telling you what I think, I want to establish that I'm a dumb shit who doesn't know much relative to what I need to know. Whatever success I've had in life has had more to do with my knowing how to deal with my not knowing than anything I know. Yep. Boom. That's it right there. That's the next step. Yep. So you know somebody is highly intelligent and trustworthy if they tell you that they don't know. You have to be weary of the people who think they know everything because the truth is if Ray Dalio is worth $16.9 billion and states that I don't know a whole lot, uh, all I know is what I don't know, and I utilize that to my advantage, then we need to recognize that there's opportunities for all of us. Yeah, you actually want to know what made me trust Southwind. When I joined the team here at Southwind, uh, I was in a contract with the Olathe School District that I, that I had to break. And there were a couple things in that interview that I said, man, these guys really get it. You guys told me I don't know several times. But then you also told me what you do know, which is still consistent to today. And last week, um, you know, in your video that you did for Shack Shine, I believe you had referenced this. And and it lets me know that it is actually your core. You say that you don't know a lot of times. But here's what you do know. When things get hard, we go harder. And that's easy to know. That's controllable. You said, man, you know, if it's snowing outside, I'm doing double the door hangers. That's what I do know. But I don't know how many jobs are going to have tomorrow. (laughs) <laughs> like I, I don't know that, but I do know, man, today is hard. And when things are hard, people start quitting. So that's when I go twice as hard. Yeah, I think that that's, that's very true. And, uh, you know, I got a lot of comments about that video from, from the folks at Shack Shine. They appreciated, you know, those concepts. But, you know, I also think about this as an opportunity to seek knowledge and information uh, because, you know, what we always say is non knowledge is abundant, but the desire is scarce. So Ray knows that he doesn't know. So what do you think he does so he does get the knowledge? He seeks information from people and resources such as books, which is why he titled the book Principles. Yeah, so like Ray's a billionaire hedge funder, but if he was going to invest in a basketball team, he's probably not going to ask his hedge fund analyst if it's a good investment. Like he's going to go to somebody who is actually currently successful at investing in basketball teams. Mark Cuban would be come to mind. And he'd probably call Mark and he'd say, Hey Mark, I'm thinking about investing in the Boston Celtics because he lives in Connecticut. Uh, And he would say, you know, tell me your experience with investing in the NBA. Meritocracy. He talks about that a lot. Yep. That's why uh, you know that to be true, right? So you're reading the book now. Um, and so that, that's where there's an opportunity for us. We're getting off the stoop, and our next step is the seeking of knowledge and recognizing the gaps that we have in our own life and our own minds and what we actually know at this point. Because what we've done at this point has got, has got us to the point we are right now in life. To believe without seeking knowledge that we can move forward and continue to gain ground or gain our desires or things that we want is foolish, Uh, not without seeking to understand and getting the information that uh, helps you actually receive what you're looking for. Yeah, truth be told, someone has already gone through what you are just now encountering, and you need a massive amount of information 
to navigate through the situation. So you need mentorship or knowledge. You know, a lot of the times when you are getting off the stoop in, in order to use it as a step, you know, like you've got to know people. Who are you in proximity with is really important. And if you're not in proximity with people that can give you the information you need, you have to seek it from, from books or from podcasts or from videos on YouTube. So it's like, what are you using the resources in your life to acquire for you? Are you just using them to scroll on Twitter, Instagram, uh, TikTok, or what, or what have you? Are you watching, you know, I really, I get on my kids every time they watch people playing video games on YouTube. I'm like, <laughs> my that's, son does it. Like, that's not what you're supposed to be doing with that. You know, like use that to watch an educational video or something of that sort. Yeah. So I think that's really. It's important. funny. It's easy to, to see that from our perspective. But for them, you know, it's what really matters. And that's why we have to check ourselves in life. Because sometimes we believe something really matters, but then when you look back in time, you realize that it wasn't, it didn't, it wasn't what you thought it was, and it didn't actually matter. And there's all these other things that you should have been doing first. And a, another reason to seek mentorship and guidance, um, because there's people who have had experiences and can help use shared experiences to help you get to where you want to go. Uh, Ray Dalio, speaking of him, you know, his son died about six weeks ago, uh, and it was a traumatic experience for him. But if you read, he has, like, notes and things that he's written about the experience, which is really interesting to read his perspective as somebody who, uh, you know, on the surface has it all, yep. has $16 billion. That's a lot of money. I mean, there's not much he can't do, but you know what he can't do? Bring his son back to life. And that's a, that's a feeling of no power. And so how he responds to that is really interesting. And he talks about all the people he, he goes and he talks to and how he's looking for answers. And so he talks to all of these people to help gain perspective because that's a lot about what life is. It's about perspective, and all of us have different ones. LeDrew's perspective is different than mine. Nathan, who's filming and uh, recording right now, his perspective is different than ours, and it's shaped by our life experience. 100%, which brings me to um, another concept. This is uh, maybe a little forward for, for this call, but perspective taking. You have to be able to take the perspective of others to be able to seek to understand them so that you can also influence them or directionally guide them uh, with integrity, that is. But you can't do so without taking on their perspective. I think Ray does that extremely well in, here in this book. You know, something that I think of when you talk about seeking knowledge, you know, I want to encourage everyone to ask respectfully people, hey, how do you know that? Not in a way that I'm doubting that you know what you know, but hey, how did you know that? Where did you find that information? You know, actually, until we had a conversation, I had never read Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. It's a phenomenal read. Everyone, like I see why I think it was uh, Theodore Roosevelt read that book and said over a hundred times. Um, it makes sense to why he, he did that. Yeah. Um, you all want to know, hey, how do you know that? Because it actually turns out that Everyone who's up to something, they know they don't know. So that when you ask someone, how you, how do you know? You say, oh, I, I read that from Principles yeah. of Ray Dalio. Bob, Bob Iger, I'm reading Bob's book right now of A Ride of a Lifetime. And he had a whole chapter about uh, going, you know, Bob's from ABC. And he's now the CEO of Disney. And they, he, as he moves into the C, as a as a portion of ABC where they allow him to oversee um, – programming that's entertainment like he's always been on the business business side now he's to a creative component and he's like man i don't know anything to do with this so you know what i'm going to do i'm going to get the best people in the and i'm just going to ask a whole bunch of questions and tell them if i don't know that i don't know and that is actually a show of strength and it allowed me to know more because they told me and i instead of pretending like i already knew everything I asked questions, and I actually learned what I needed to know, and I could be more effective in my role. And then the learning that he got uh, during those times where he's working with the best in the business from an entertainment standpoint and creative content standpoint actually allowed him to be more effective as the CEO of Disney, where he was instrumental in bringing companies like Pixar into Disney or Marvel into Disney. And he could recognize the creative elements that allowed him to be like, which allowed him to be successful. Yeah, of course. So uh, here would be an example of how we can um, seek knowledge, which is abundant. Uh, so, what what are you currently reading right now? Well, you, you said the Bob Iger. Yeah, the Bo the Bob Iger book right now. What's that called? Um, A Ride of a Lifetime. And what led you 
Like, how'd you know to read that book? I watched his master class. I subscribed to a master class where other business leaders are talking about, you know, things that are successful. I also had read uh, a biography about Steve Jobs, and in the biography, it was called Becoming Steve Jobs, and it talked about the relationship with Bob Iger, which gave, which created more va va validation that Bob was up to something. Yeah, how'd you know about that piece with Steve Jobs? Uh, I was looking at Audible, at stuff that I wanted to listen to that would be a good listen while I drive. Yeah, when was the first time you had, uh, heard about Audible or downloaded that? Uh, the first time I heard about Audible, I was buying everything on Apple iTunes, and it was getting really expensive from an audiobook standpoint. And I was like, dang, there's got to be a better way for me to read more books for less money. <laughs> and Audible has this program that allows you to uh, if you buy a book, you get a credit, but every month they give you a credit, and it's thirteen ninety nine a month, and so like it basically pays for itself, is and so that's what I did. Of course, yeah. How did you uh, hear about MasterClass, and what is that? Um, so how I heard about MasterClass was just looking for more information about. Uh, I was served an ad um, on Instagram, probably because of what I search online, and uh, you know. I looked at some of the people that they had, you know, um, interviewed for master classes, and I thought, wow, this is really impressive. And so uh, it was around Christmas time, and I bought it for myself because I was looking for an opportunity to gain more information. Yeah. So I just took you through a game. I don't know if you know this or not, but it was called How Do You Know? So I'm, I'm sitting up here. I'm like, okay, well, how'd you know to get into master? How'd you do that? How'd you, how'd you hear about Audible the first time? Mm -hmm. How'd you hear about Bob Iger? through Steve Jobs, boom, boom, boom. So that's how you actually find out the knowledge you need to know. Because truth be told, no one knows. <laughs> you know, it, but there is an order of operation and it's called seeking knowledge. So by way of your Instagram, um, you know, it, it knew, the algorithm knew, hey, I need to show this guy masterclass because when I do, we're gonna sell it to him. Yeah, And then, that's right. you know, like, because they sold you that, they just sold you another book and another book and, and Bob's book and then Steve's book from from, that came from Audible, which came by way of iTunes. The books were too expensive. And this is how you know these things. Because whether you know it or not, uh, I would assume I never, never looked at your bank statement. But I'd imagine Ray here has got you beat. Yep. Which means you continue to try to step up. Yep. And go higher and higher by way of more knowledge and information. Yep. And, and every door you unlock, you get another key to say, hey, here's someone else who you should probably look to for That's some right. more information because they have something that you need. Yeah, to, for example, uh, Ray Dalio's principal's book led me to Schwartzman's book, who was Blackwater. Uh, it's another hedge fund manager, Stephen Schwartzman, I believe his name is, which I read and I loved, which kind of led me down the road to other things. But, you know, uh, all of that being said, I think the most fundamental component to the exercise we just went in is every single time I was looking for something, Nothing just came up and slapped me on the face and was like, hey, man, you better read this. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't read this right now, like, n nobody made me do anything. It was a natural instinct to gain more information so I have more answers uh, because I recognize that I don't know shit. Yeah. And that every day that I'm the CEO of this company, which is going to do $60 million this year and then continue to do more revenue, I know I need to know more. Like, I know that I can't get us to where we all want to go. I can't help us to get there without getting smarter, learning more, taking, getting information from people who have done it. Yeah. First. So tell me this. What are the most, uh, I hate to use this word, but what are the most convenient ways I can get information? Because what if I'm a person like, man, dude, I don't have a lot of time. I've got kids at home. When I get home, I'm tired. I got mm -hmm. all this crap going on. Like, what's the most convenient way I can get this information you're talking about? Yeah, talk to people who know about it on phone calls, listen to audio books when I'm driving. There's always an opportunity, and I think those are excuses that people make, right? Like, there's no convenience to learn yeah. is the truth. The, the fact of the matter is, is I wake up at 4.15 every morning. That allows me the opportunity to do what I need to do. I put my kids to bed at 8, and I stay up and I work till 9. E basically, every single day. The weekends, they go, they stay up a little longer, and I don't really ha ha like stress them on that. So, But I'm still getting to do my thing, and my wife just kind of understands that, like, come around 8 o'clock, we're hanging together when I get home till about 8. But at 8, like, she knows where she can find me. Yeah, you know what? I, I love that you said that. That takes me back to my early days here when I say – there are no shortcuts on the path to success. 
they're just they're actually they're just aren't so it's not going to be convenient. It's actually going to be inconvenient. <laughs> you know, like that's how success makes sure right. that not too many people find him. Like he's playing hide and seek with everybody because he hates people. He's like, man, I'm gonna make sure everything it takes to get to the point that they want to get to, that Ledrew wants to get to, that Josh is going to be really inconvenient to hopefully discourage them from ever getting here to to hang out with me. That's true. Um, it just takes more, and then like that's life is always going to test us, and check and see if we're willing to give, uh, give. Uh, give it what it's going to take in order to get what you want. Those desi- the desire that we were talking about on the last podcast, like there's, it's like this undefined list of things that it's going to require you to do, and it, and it's sitting there, checking it off as you get stuff done. And if you don't ever get those things done, you never get to get to the next level. And then you and and you know you're at the next level when you achieve the things that you wanted. Uh, but there's always comes a time where there's a you know a step or a bump that makes you say like I have to change directions, I have to course correct if you will, or it's going to take something different than I was willing to give earlier. Like at first I was getting a lot of knowledge from reading books and stuff, and then I thought, wow, this is great. Uh, but I really like only people I hang out with um, at work are the people I go to work with, and then I joined this group called YPO because a guy named. To more Nana, who's a good friend of mine, introduced me to this group, and he's like, "Hey, man, all the best executives in the city, they do this group, and you should try to get into it." And I'm not sure if you can get into it, but if you talk, go through this step, maybe you can get in. So I went through it and I got in, and then I start connecting with people who have businesses that are way bigger than mine, and I learn from them when they're de- they deal they deal with stuff that's different than what I've dealt with, but then going down the road over the last three years, I start dealing with some of the similar things that they deal with. And I'm already prepared to handle it because of the information that I received hanging out with them, understanding what their life is like running $100 million companies, which makes it more likely for me to make less mistakes. And really, uh, you know, I think that you always have to be looking for ways to improve yourself because nobody's good enough as they sit. Not even Ray, who's got $16.9 billion. There may be a time in Ray's life that the stock market does something that he can't control. And he's going to have to change what he's doing. His process of using meritocracy in computers, which made him famous, he uses computers as a way to uh, generate the results using what they call quantitative analysis. Uh, that's Ray. That's how he got. That's how he got to where he is. You know, maybe he has to switch because of the GameStop stuff that's happening. It does. It's less, far more unpredictable. And maybe now race decides I have to start investing in things that have a more sure bet, like home service businesses. <laughs> and they come come call in for us and they say, hey, man, like uh, this is a sure thing. We can control this output. So this makes sense to put my money. I'm not saying that that would ever happen. But, you know, that that's a possibility. Right. And um, I think it's important that we recognize that. You know, life is going to give us roadblocks and humble us in different ways all the time. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think of the average age of uh, of our team here at Southwind. It's probably somewhere in the mid-20s. So how old are you today? Uh, 37. All right, 37. Let's say that you had the opportunity to meet 25-year-old Josh. Yes. And you were going to say, hey, here are your two actionables. So let's say he listened to this stoop story here, mm-hmm. and he was like, okay, well, what do I do next? Where do I go for this information? What are the top two resources you would have him leverage to go find information that he's going to start seeking? The top two resources I would leverage. Uh, would, uh, it, well, it depends on what the, what's available to me at the time. So back at 25, when I was 25 and I had limited things available well, I would to say, me. No, point. I would say you're, you're 25, but it's 2021 where, man, we're living in a world where everything's at your fingertips. Yeah, but everything's like... I, I guess to my to that point, like I, I would I would do what I would do what I did at 25 and continue to invest in myself from a knowledge standpoint. I read and listened to. I mean, man, I've been doing this for 14 years. The amount of books and audio I have listened to is a lot, man. You've been to my house. You see my bookshelf. Yeah. That only represents a small amount of the things that I've. That's only the stuff I liked. It doesn't even include all the stuff I didn't like that you see there, right? Like. Or the stuff that I listen to, because not everything's on there. But the amount of knowledge that I've had to consume 
in order to be here at this moment right now at 37 and where we are is substantial. So, so to so like, today's 25 year old, so, and you know, to the 25 year old in this organization now, the average age of the people. Yeah, I, I, I would say take yourself seriously, plan your day every single day, not just what you're going to do, but what you want to get out of it, and then evaluate if you actually succeeded each day. And that's not even a seeking of knowledge. That's just understanding that every single day can't. I can't catch the day. And what I mean by that is I can't just come in and get slapped in the face by today. Like I have to slap today in the face. 100%. And so the way that I do that is I look at what I want to accomplish tomorrow, not the duties that I have to do. Like everybody has a job to do. Even me today, I have things that I have to do. There's job requirements that everybody has to fulfill. But there's also this underlying component of like creating impact and action. What do I want to achieve today? Understand that before you go to work. And then once you're at work, don't spend the first hour of your day trying to decide what you're doing. I already know that because capacity and like scalability is all about maximizing your time. And so get to work, execute your plan, get your job done, and try to do more. It's all about – there was a guy who told me, and I can't even remember, something I read along the way, but the, the quickest way to achieve success is consistently exceed – people's expectations so if i recognize and i believe that that's true that's true and, and, and it sounds like dimming is it ever dimming uh yes i i think it may have been a dimming deal uh um but like that i think that's true so like if i want to get to where i want to go i have to do more than i was expected to do and that looks somewhat different for everybody but you have to, in order to do more, define what the baseline is <laughs> because it's impossible to do more if you're just doing your job. You know, so you have to understand what more looks like and then chase that. And then you'll, you'll get rewarded for it. You know, you'll exceed expectations. You'll achieve the success. But you have to first and foremost plan to be successful. Boom. So you heard it there, people. You have the information that you need to now use the stoop as a step, man. Yes. We're off to a great start, 2021. Let's finish strong. Get out the stoop.